Avatar shocked audiences worldwide in 2009 by being an example of how far cinema could go. And now the sequel's about to take one step further. Actually, a lot of steps further. Too many to count. And when you're sitting in the cinema watching those blue people run around and you wonder how did they pull that off, well then this video's going to come in handy. First off, how did James Cameron even get everyone to agree to film Avatar? The cinematic boundaries Cameron pushed with Avatar must have taken a lot of guts and money. So how on earth did he manage to get people to film this movie? Well, it was all about timing and persistence. Right after Titanic was released and became a legendary record-breaking movie, Cameron announced his plans to work on his next feature film, Avatar. He wrote a treatment for the sci-fi movie before he had even made Titanic. That's how high he had aimed. But after the major success of Titanic, he had all the more reason to push the movie further into creation, and he quickly realized that money wasn't going to be a problem. The American filmmaker had initially decided to begin filming for Avatar right after Titanic in 1997, but he hit another roadblock. He realized that technology hadn't reached that point yet. So instead of giving up completely, he proceeded to wait. That's right, the guy waited for the rest of the world to catch up to his brilliant idea. And then eight years later in 2005, the technology had finally advanced so that Cameron could begin experimenting with his plans for Avatar. Fox agreed to give him $10 million just to shoot a little test scene. And now it was his turn to convince others that his vision was truly worth investing in. And well, his test scene featuring Yun Jin Kim and Daniel Bess lasted only 37 seconds. But it was enough to get everyone on board. And then Avatar finally got all the investors it needed. Moving on to the actual filming of Avatar and how that turned out. Sure, Cameron's vision was captivating and all, but executing it must have been an entirely different ordeal. To pull it off, he had to gather experts from all over the world specializing in fields like linguistics and plant physiology to create the world of Pandora. And when you have one of the biggest movie budgets of all time, you might not know where to stop. James wanted his movie to look hyper-realistic. If you can remember, back in 2009, all the CGI films were not intended to look real. They were treated as a separate genre of movies. But Cameron sought to change that. He wanted a mixture of CGI and live-action movies to translate on the screen. He explained that the goal was to confuse the audience. He wanted them not to know exactly what they were looking at, was it real or was it fake? That's the line he wanted to walk. In order to achieve this effect, he recruited Weta Digital, the special effects team behind Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings and the virtual production supervisor Glenn Derry. With this team, he went on to pioneer a new way of making movies entirely. The team created a new kind of virtual reality camera that allowed the filmmakers to see all the added special effects as they were filming a scene. In order to do that, the camera really didn't have a lens. It was just an LCD screen and several makers that indicated the actors' positions. So essentially, the actors were filmed in 360 degrees, with no idea where the camera would be, following up with a new approach to filmmaking that Cameron introduced. With actors having no clue where the cameras were placed, they were given a certain kind of freedom that other actors don't have. In a special behind-the-scenes video, the American director explained that with this liberty, he could add whatever he wanted in the movie. The possibilities were endless. This kind of setup was really important to the filming process process, as most of the movie, about 75%, was filmed entirely on a motion capture stage. The rest of it was filmed on a traditional set. On the motion capture stage, the actors had to wear a special suit that reflected infrared light at the stationary cameras. There were about 120 cameras like that placed all around the set to capture every sudden and individual move of each actor. The set was also six times bigger than Weta had ever prepared for a movie before. This gave the actors more freedom to move around so that the cameras could better identify their actions. When the filming process was done, Weta Digital created about 800 characters and 1,800 visual effect shots, including CGI settings. James also wanted the filming process to be entirely performance-centered. Isn't every CGI film performance-centered, though? Well, not quite. When other films used motion capture, performing the actor wasn't what was entirely translated at the end, which is why actors like Andy Serkis rarely got praised for their roles. To make sure the filming was performance-captured, the the actors had a small camera placed near their faces so that their facial expressions could be noticed and then used to build the animated version. Let's take a look at how the sequel one-upped its predecessor. The Way of Water, as the name suggests, had to be filmed underwater. Well, not exactly filmed, but created to look like it was underwater, right? Well, not quite. To complicate things for himself and turn his vision into a reality, he actually filmed the entire movie underwater. In order to pull that off, there had to be giant and bulky camera rigs and cameras that didn't distort the 
image due to their refraction underwater. Cameron solved that problem like he had solved every other problem until now. He hired someone to invent a 3D camera that could work underwater without all the distortions. Tech guru Powell Actel was given the job of creating that type of camera, and it was the first time that it was used for a feature film. Actel's creation was called DeepX 3D, and it basically included two cameras and one beam splitter. Another crucial factor of that camera was the Nikonos submersible lenses that cancelled all that underwater distortion. Apart from that, the team also had to figure out how to place the markers underwater. Once again, water causes distortion, which would confuse the actors and cameramen. Well, to overcome that problem, they filled the surface of the 900,000 gallon water tank with white balls. This prevented light reflections and eliminated the distortions. And then we have the problem of breathing. That's right. Since the actors had to film underwater, they had to be given scuba gear in order to breathe. Right? Right, James? Well, nope, because the scuba gear would cause noise and interfere with other cameras. The actors simply had to hold their breaths. Moving on to more reasons why the way of the water is so groundbreaking. With the trailer's release, fans are wondering what exactly makes this movie different from the previous one, and why it took so long to make. Well, by now, you must have understood why it differs from the previous Avatar film. But it takes another expert to notice just how amazing this new movie is and how groundbreaking it is. The folks at Corridor Crew recently reacted to the trailer of the sequel and explained just how different and innovative the new James Cameron movie is. In the video, Ian Hubert talked about how the surface tension in the water looks so much more complex than anything he's seen before when it comes to CGI filmmaking. Sam Gorski added to this sense of wonder and stated that Weta Digital must have made many patents while filming this movie. He also said he heard that they made four or five patents just for water simulations. So you can imagine just how many patents they must have made for the entire movie. Ren Weichmann also explained that, from the looks of the trailer, the team must have done water simulation on two stages. In the first stage, they would have created the first particle simulation for the water and then moved on to creating a simulation for the new particles on the surface. That would have created the surface tension. This, he explained, was an example of how Weta Digital made everything from scratch for their movies. Wrapping up with the reality behind some of the most iconic scenes from Avatar. To finish off this behind-the-scenes video, we must show what was really going on behind all that CGI during some of the scenes from the record-breaking movie. The scene where Jake first wakes up with his Avatar body was one of the most important scenes for Cameron. Not only does Jake get to experience a life without his disability, but it's an entirely different thing altogether. So in order to do that, the sense of wonder and excitement on Jake's face had to be captured entirely. The Jake actor Sam Worthington spoke about his confusion while filming the scene. He added that, at times while talking to Cameron, he had no idea what he was talking about. But somehow, he still managed to pull it off. To capture the intricacy of the facial expressions, the small camera attached to their faces managed to capture the movement of each muscle. Apart from that scene, the part where Jake gets attacked by a vicious creature known as the Thanator was also really difficult to shoot, as Sam Worthington had to act with a CGI creature he couldn't see. So, he was just looking at a marker while doing the scene. Finally, there's a scene where Nitiri drinks the sacred water from a leaf. That part became important as it showed the bond between Jake and Neytiri growing. To shoot the scene and make it look realistic, Zoe Saldana drank water from a water bottle to simulate the needed expressions and movements. And it turned out perfectly. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think of the way of the water? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.